I am gonna do a quick breakdown of uh, my process uh, on this this quick example of uh, how to use Smartify nodes to uh, speed up your workflow uh, doing concept art or illustrations. Basically, here applying some uh, environmental effects, the the smart effects from Smartify nodes. Here we see the the mossy effect and the snow and frost effect. It's a quick way to blend all the different assets together because you can synchronize uh, these smart effects on any number of materials and, and do variations. So you can keep them uh, separated if you want, um, but still have a, a quick control over everything as well. So here is how it looks uh, when it's rendered in Blender. So based on this, I open all the different paths and do some compositing in Photoshop, but uh, I can start showing the 3D scene. So it's a pretty basic scene. Uh, I used auto building from Julien Gauthier to, to get some, uh, some basic building. Uh, so the first step was creating a, a ground plane just to have a, a bit more context and scale in the scene. I used yeah, one of the smart effects that are here to add a uh, grass on top of uh, a material that's already in the Smartify library. The material that uses the, the Pedalify, um, this allows to, to add some water to a, to a texture set. We, we deactivate the grass, we'll see a bit better. But, uh, but basically, we, we can control a bunch of different things, the amount of water and the color, the roughness. So that's not the best lighting setup, but uh, basically you can see there is a control for yeah the color of the water, the mud, and the, the rim. And that's uh, between the, the flat surface of the, of the water and the, the more rough uh, part. If I darken the stone a bit, it will be easier to see. I can control the surface specular and the, the water specular. In theory, it's pretty simple to use. Uh, all the, the settings are self-explanatory. Here I just reactivate the MOS effect. And from there, I did a, a second plane that I could sculpt with a, a rocky texture. And the same synchronized the grass or MOS effect. Then I added the auto-building house and I customized it a bit. And I can still edit it, like push faces uh, and create new new shape and all the the smart materials will follow obviously so i broke down a bit the the structure to give it a, a more realistic and organic look avoiding like straight edges if this uh, this house is a bit abandoned uh, the roof probably collapsed a bit with the, the age. And then I added a few props, some rocks, some uh, planks. Um, I used the, the physics dropper add-on that's amazing to simply duplicate an, uh, an object a bunch of times and launch a, a rigid body simulation so you can create a bit of chaos in your scene with this. And then on the blank material, I pasted the most synced effect. I have two versions. Uh, the most flat for everything that's a, a bit more flat, like the ground. And the moss is uh, appearing basically less often. If I swap it with the normal moss, you'll see there is more moss. Simply the, the, the facing is a, a bit different. Uh, yeah, to do this, I simply append uh, without the reuse uh, this, this node. Uh, once you created your your smart effect, or just uh, drag and drop uh, an existing smart effect, you can paste it in this new node. Just make sure it's a, it's a new one and not one that's already used. Create a new synced smart effect. Uh, inside it, it's very simple. There's just this, so you can paste your effect here and then copy paste this node onto any other material. Meaning, when you edit the settings of this smart effect, they will synchronize on all these different materials. So here I still wanted some control over two types of moss, some, some effect that creates a little bit of moss, and another effect here, for example, on the 
items that creates much more moss. Um, so I simply made sure they, they are two, two different nodes. And if I wanted to create a third, it's very simple. I just uh, make unique and rename to make sure uh, to make sure I won't uh, yeah, make any mistake. So I also added some ropes. Uh, basically, I just, uh, I just grabbed a, a rope texture from Google, uh, simply drag and dropped it in Blender. And I added as well the the mossy effect on the rope as I wanted to control it only for this rope material I, I didn't paste the synced effect I just paste this um, the mossy effect directly so to draw more ropes it's very simple it just create a, a curve and then with the the draw tool you can check the the tools option and the two important functions are this uh, cursor or surface surface meaning it will snap to anything uh, even light, so it's a, it, this is a bit annoying. The, the very easy workaround is just to hide the overlays if your curves are snapping to, to light or any, any UI element. But you can also snap to cursor, so with shift right click you can place the cursor and then you can draw on a plane that will face the camera and be placed on the cursor. So that way it's fairly easy to draw in 3D. And if uh, yeah, things are not well placed, you can always transform the curves uh, after they've been drawn. So from there, obviously, what was missing was uh, vegetation. So I used various uh, asset banks I have, mostly free ones, um, to add, I guess, only two trees, two different types of trees, and a few grass elements. And on the trunk, of the trees, I pasted as well the, the mossy sync effect. So this helps as well a lot to merge the vegetation inside the scene because then the, the tree seems to be affected by the same, the same elements as, uh, as everything else in the scene, the, the planks, the, the rocks, everything uh, seems to be merged together naturally. And any, any tweak, any adjustment on the this mossy smart effect replicates on, on the trees and on everything. So that's how it was very simple to switch this scene to a, a window scene. So I can yeah do it in a, in a few clicks. I just have um, basically four or five different moss effects. So I just need to swap them to a snow effect. Here I pasted the mossy effect uh, just before another node that uh, that was defining the transparency for these these roof tiles. That's uh, yeah, a practical thing uh, with Smartify is that there is no automation, so there is no bug. Basically, everything is is controlled by you. Um, everything can be modified as you wish because it's all just nodes you could create yourself, except they are. They are already yeah very well organized, so uh, doing yeah them from scratch obviously it will be <laughs> a chore. But now in a few clicks we yeah totally transformed the the environment. Obviously if it was winter maybe the leaves would have fallen, but uh, but we still have <clears throat> a bit of, of snow on the leaves because uh, because everything is uh, yeah procedural. So any any mesh can can receive these uh, these smart effects. So even even the leaves. Uh, and yeah, here if we want a bit more snow on uh, on these, as they are in a separated synced effect, we can increase the snow, and it will affect uh, all the other materials that have the the synced effect. That are yeah, thirteen materials. So here, just playing with the facing, meaning there will be more snow facing downward until yeah, it faces on the side. And if I keep pushing, it will yeah, add snow even on the faces facing downward. And if I create more distance between the on and the off, it means the, the ramp will be larger. In fact, uh, at any time, I can look at the mask of any smart effect. So very simply with a control shift click, I can check exactly uh, what I'm doing with the, the smart masks. If I want a lot of contrast, I can keep these uh, the on and the off close together. 
meaning it will go from black to white nearly instantly. And if I want something softer, I can keep some distance between them. For, uh, for snow here, we want to keep things only on the on top. We can add just a little bit of, um, of snow on the sides. And to view the shader I, again, I can just uh, control shift click on the, the last node. Here is the synth effect. If I feel there, is, there isn't enough contrast, I can uh, very easily change the, the look of the, the scan asset uh, as it has the, the smart shader. I have uh, access to a little bit of color grading with a soft light and multiply. So that's because it's what we usually use in Photoshop to just uh, correct photos to Photobash to integrate. So it looks more natural to color correct uh, a picture with soft light and multiply rather than uh, a U-shift because U-shift will um, create a lot of artifacts between the different views and it just looks more natural to to play with um, with blending modes like this so here if i want the snow to be a bit more shiny or anything i have access to a few yeah shading options i can make it a bit brighter a bit bluer add a bit more fresnel a bit more glossy i can also access the displacement of the snow so i want to fake a bit more uh, actual snow just don't forget to have your displacement active in your material here in, in the settings surface the idea is to have displacement only because the bump you can uh, basically add it in the smart shader you can add more or less a bump from the, the height uh, and blender Add it at 100% if you have uh, bump and, dis and displacement, displacement and bump. In most cases, I have too much bump. So here in, in the smart shader, you can you can tweak uh, and yeah, just how much you want uh, this uh, fine bump from the, the height map. And obviously, I didn't have the displacement connected, so also shading smooth will uh, avoid a lot of. Uh, artifacts with displacement so here i can simulate like the surface has been modified by the the snow effect so i can check other part of the the scene just to make sure uh, these changes to the the synced effect um, work on other assets for example this one has a bit too much snow so i can simply calm it down. I could also do it only for this object, but uh, I don't want to complexify too much the scene, so I can also darken a bit this, uh, this scan. So this is the image from the scan, and it's just plugged to a smart shader, so I have a few, a few more options compared to a um, uh, principle. So now that's more reasonable. So with Alt right click, I can connect things uh, very fast with the, the Node Wrangler add-on that's uh, by default in Blender. And I can look in the, the camera view to make sure already in the, in the viewport uh, that the, the render will look okay. It's uh, yeah, faster than to, to press F12. Just uh, control space on any window to full screen it. And yes, yeah, so I can simply render and I keep all passes separate in a multi-layer AXR. In Photoshop, um, I can do a lot more things to push the image. Here I can show one node that I added to the bonus in Smartify. That's uh, a multi-pass denoise. So it's very simple to set up. You can just drag drag it on in your compositor. To connect it to your render layers, you can just uh, alt right click and in a few seconds it's all connected. And so what that do is denoise all the paths you need. In fact, uh, you can define what you want to denoise or not. I think that's the best solution uh, because you, you can go very fast uh, if you just denoise the, the diffuse and the the gloss but if you want to do compositing you will want to have all these different passes uh, denoised because you'll recompose them uh, after this denoise 
So yeah, here everything is named. So DN for denoise. So here is the diffuse DN direct, diffuse indirect, diffuse color. So this one doesn't need to be denoised often. But same for the gloss. And here I don't really have transmissive, uh, so I don't need to, to denoise that. Just denoise the, the volume, direct and direct, and the occlusion. And then all these passes are plugged into um, a file output. So there the, the render file will be written here with all these different passes. So in Photoshop, you'll just need a plugin called OXR.io, and then you can import your renders from Blender like this. So here in Photoshop, it's very simple to recompose a, an, an image. By default, that's uh, what I have. So I felt in, in Blender there was too much contrast uh, on this image. So once you recompose it, it, it gives exactly the same results as in Blender. But you have a lot of um, ways to affect the image to improve it. You can change the exposure and the color uh, on the diffuse direct, for example which is basically all the light on the indirect that's all the global illumination basically and then the gloss you can increase or decrease the the glossiness of, of, of everything you can also boost the emission if you want and you get the the volume that uh, that's very important to to control in an image to have just enough but not too much so here, once I, I'm done compositing the passes, I simply control A, copy paste onto a file that's in 8 bit because uh, in 32 bits, the imported XR lacks most of Photoshop features. Like you can't really paint, you can't really do anything uh, apart from changing blending modes. So here, by pasting in a 8 bit file, I can mostly use the, the mist or the Z depth to add some handmade uh, fog, some vignette, some yeah, elements to help reading all the different elements in the scene to have a better perception of the, the depth. And then I can obviously change the, the background, the sky. It's always a good idea to simply put some photo because it will be better composed than the, your HDR from Blender and probably better resolution too, and you have more choice. And it's easy enough to find some clouds that match more or less with your lighting. And then the volume can be controlled with a layer in overlay mode, for example, so you can paint over the, the volume without affecting it too much. A good idea also is to copy paste your, uh, your base composite to Photo Sketcher, because that allows you to just break or uh, erase a bit the the CG render look. So there is a bunch of different effects, but uh, the one I used here is the number eight because it's very fast. It's a bit slow, but you still that you can work in parallel. And once it's done, uh, you can simply uh, copy with this icon and Control V in Photoshop to paste your image. So. In a few seconds, you you have a, a more painterly version that obviously you can you can make appear more or less uh, on your image. So here I painted this uh, this mask to make this uh, this painterly version from Photo Sketcher uh, appear mostly on the leaves and on, on a few spots that were too grainy, noisy, or um, and yeah. Once uh, once you're happy with. Uh, with the, the light and the fog and the what uh, what I do is copy pasting um, so control A control shift C uh, control shift C will copy anything that's visible instead of just the active layer and I paste it on a um, file where I have all the, the usual color correction and uh, effects so so I have a smart object I can open and simply paste the image save and then all my effects are applied so. I can get toggle some on or off. That uh, that concludes, I guess, the the breakdown. And basically, I think uh, it's pretty practical to be able to add this uh, uh, everywhere you want and still have a lot of uh, control over pretty much uh, anything. So the, the textures, the look, the the presence of the effect. You can, depending on your client feedback, you can push them more or less. Yeah, as it's 3D, you can change the camera, change the lighting. So I think it's a, a, 
a great way to yeah, easily make things look more natural and consistent because they, they all have the, the same uh, the same mark kinda. Uh, yeah, I hope that was interesting for you and thanks a lot.